I want to welcome you to Face to Face. I'm so excited today. I have just an incredible, incredible man of God. You know, to see God raising up voices out of my home nation, England, the United Kingdom, blesses my heart. Today, you're going to be so blessed as I welcome Scott McNamara. He's the founder of Jesus at the Door. He's married to his wonderful wife, Jay. They have four beautiful children. You're going to be truly blessed today as I welcome Scott McNamara. Thank you, brother. You know, it's so good to have you, brother. I, I met you a number of months ago. Ever since I've met you, I love your heart. I love your passion for Jesus. Michael. You know, to see that you've come out of the UK and all that God is doing in your life, just winning souls. It's just such a privilege for me to be able to have you. For those that don't know you, just share very briefly. I know we, there's something on your heart today, but very briefly, just share your testimony. Yeah, my testimony, I came from a place of addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, running, uh, mixing with gangsters and living this crazy debauched lifestyle. Ended up staring down the gates of hell of a drug overdose and then the Holy Spirit rescued me. I felt Jesus come to me and protect me from crossing the, into the, the, the precipice of eternity, save me literally from hell. So when I got born again, I got born again through the lens of eternity. So I think what it did to me, it showed me that everyone's in that position. And I was a person who believed in God, but I was on the wrong road believing in the right God. I often tell people you can believe in God all the way to hell or follow him all the way to heaven. Believing alone without following isn't enough. He wants you to follow. And, uh, and that's how I came to the Lord and, and Jesus at the door was birthed a number of years after that. You know, Jesus at the door is literally the highways and the byways, yeah, preaching man. the gospel face to face with people on the streets, in supermarkets, in malls. It's just incredible. You know, I remember when the Lord called me and that call was something that, it's not a job. It's, I always say, if you cut me open, the call of God, that's what I am. I live and breathe to, to serve the Lord and to answer that which He has given to me. And I remember in Luke chapter five, when Jesus comes to Peter and He says, he says can I use your boat? Yeah. You know, I preach a message called the deep cries out. And you know, at that moment, Peter was gonna step into a place of destiny. Yeah. You know, he's about, Jesus is about to take him from the shore and he's about to say, launch into the deep. Mm -hmm. And when he gets out in the deep, that's when Peter truly discovers what God had made him to be. He wasn't just a fisherman. Jesus said, I'll make you a fisher of men. Amen. And there's something about that partnership that when we surrender and we say yes to Jesus, yeah. that it releases that eternal purpose in our lives. Yeah. Talk to us, share what's on your heart today. Yeah, I, uh, the Lord really marked me with this. I mean, just as a precursor, I'll share. You know, when I, when I began as an evangelist, I was, um, thrust into a position of a street guy employed by a church to stand five days a week on a street and pray for people. In that place, I was out of my depth, literally out of my depth, just like, like Peter. I didn't know what I was doing. I was on a sixth-month trial position. It was a lot, of, a lot of pressure. You know, the worst thing for an evangelist is pressure. Yeah. You feel pressure, and then what you do is you close in and you don't partner. You know, pressure is the opposite of partnership. Huh? So um, what I did, I stepped onto those streets. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, Scott, relax. Look at all the people around this town. Imagine they are like apples on a tree. So I put myself in that place. I'm thinking, okay, apples, okay, what does this mean? Then the Lord spoke to me a phrase that only Jesus can do. One phrase can change your life. Without, without any exaggeration, this phrase changed my life. I've spoken at many uh, ministry schools and all over different places. And I've seen people cry when I share this simple revelation. The Lord said, when you share, I'll shake. And what I understood is that evangelism was about partnership. Up until that point, I thought it was about how good, bad, or able I was. I didn't think it was about uh, what the Lord could do in and through me and with me. I thought it was about me. The onus was always on me. Was I as good as evangelist Nathan? Was I as good as Ryan Harbonke? I was always, you know, that was where my head was at. But the Lord said, hey, this is not about you. It's about partnership. So I began to share, he began to shake, and I began to catch those apples, and many, many apples uh, fell. But this was like the revelation of it, and I understood the Lord began to show me that everyone's the apple of his eye. You know, Deuteronomy 32.10, Zechariah 2.8, Psalm 17.8, many scriptures that allude to us being the apple of his eye, yeah. that most precious one. And the Lord began to give me this revelation of, of apples. You know, when apples fall, and nobody's there to catch them, what happens? They die, they rot. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have a problem right now in the world is that, you know, there's apples that are ready to fall and as Jesus' people, we should be the hands willing to catch them. You know, we can raise our hands in the service, but what about after the service? Are we willing to go and raise our hands in those apple orchards that the Lord's positioned us under to catch the falling apples? And if we don't catch them, they'll either die or fall into the wrong hands. And the Lord began to show me, you know, through John 6, 44, Jesus said, no one can come unless the Father draws them. Yeah. So all we've got to do is lock in with the Spirit and, you know, the, the Father through the power of the Spirit shaking the trees every day and we've got to be willing to catch. So that was kind of like the, the revelation moment and then Luke 5 was a, a big moment for me because, you know, when Peter went into that place, um, you know, when Jesus said, go and fish, now we know Peter had been fishing all night. He had a futile fishing expedition. He'd been there the whole night, didn't catch one fish. We all know the story. So Jesus comes to this expert seasoned fisherman, says, go and do it again. And Peter's like, well, I've done it all night, Lord. You know, what would be different? Peter, and Jesus said, go and do it again. So he obeys uh, the, the call. Now what happened? Because he went in partnership, it produced power. And I believe that evangelism is about partnership and partnership will bring power. If we bring the partnership, he'll bring the power which means anybody can do it, which means it's open to anybody. So Peter goes in partnership, not knowing what was going on, cast those nets and everything changed. The first time he went alone, the second time he went in partnership. That is the deciding factor of fruitfulness. You know, the process was the same, but the power had changed. Wow. Why? Because Jesus was partnering now with that individual. And that's all we've got to do, you know? You know, I... I'm reminded, you know, I preach a message on this exact scripture. It's been a message that burned in my heart. And I, I always put it like this, you know, Jesus comes, he's in the crowd mm. and he separates Peter. He said, can I use your boat? You see, yeah. sometimes we just see a boat, but yeah. Jesus is about to preach from Peter's boat Amen. to the crowd. I like it. See, we might see a boat, but Jesus sees a platform. Come on. And when we come into partnership, what well, we think, well, Lord, I've only got this. You just see a boat. Mm. Jesus sees a platform. Yeah. I want you to share with those that are watching right now that, you know, some of the things that have happened as you've just said, Lord, you can use my boat. Yeah. Those moments where you've gone into the street, into a mall. Yeah. You know, I see it every week at yeah. Nations, you know, when I'm in town and I, I go to Nations Church, I see you testify of, you're baptizing people on a yeah. Sunday morning because of someone that you met in the mall that yeah. week. Just share, I know people want to hear what God is doing. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I'll give you a, a recent testimony. I was with my team, we go out, you know, into the, to the marketplace, to Walmart, to wherever, to find those apples. And we were out there and I was training a, a one of our team and I saw this lady and um, I, I approached her, began to share with her, just, you know, real simply through our Jesus at the door model, it just takes a couple of minutes. Um, and let me say this real quick, I, I just felt the Lord gave me this revelation yesterday, you know, when I was praying about coming here. But, you know, in, in the book of John, we read when the fisherman went fishing again, and Jesus said, let your fish, let your nets down the right side. And I was just, the, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, you know, that right side, letting the, the, fish, letting the nets on the right side, what was the, it was like a technique, but it wasn't. It was just because it's, it was spoken out the word of God, out the mouth of God casting the nets on the right, were all the fish gathered on the right side? Was that a technique? No, it was just because God spoke it. And when God speaks it, it happens. And I feel with Jesus at the door, it's exactly what it is. Is it, it could be this way, it could be that way, but it is the way it is because God spoke it. And for some, it don't make any sense that I cast on the right side. It's foolishness. But when God's in it, it makes sense, you know, making mud and spitting on it and putting it on people's eyes. Was the mud holy? Did, the, did Jesus need the mud? No, he didn't. But Jesus did things in the way that he wanted to do them. Because it came from him, it was anointed. And I really feel that that is what the, the Lord has stamped it with, with that, you know? You know, we, we just have a few more minutes, but I want to share with people, this is a tool that God has given you that he's using just in a mighty way yeah. to, to cause people that maybe, you know, they don't preach and they don't feel like they're, you know, in ministry Street, but yeah. God has called us all to be soul yeah, winners, right? Yeah. Just share very quickly what God laid upon your heart. This is yeah. this is really one of the the foundational heartbeats of Jesus at the door. It's an yeah. evangelistic tool that yeah, yeah. it's not a technique, it's yeah. anointed. And yeah. if someone simply uses this, you believe, and I believe very yeah, strongly yeah. that 
it, it's a way that we can share the gospel very, very, very quickly Definitely. and very accurately. Yeah, really, and, and it is kind of like that image of, of like Jesus just said, you know, cast those nets on the right side. I don't understand why, but you can't deny the fruit. You can't deny the, the fish that they caught. Yeah. And with this, it was just the Holy Spirit. I didn't think of it, I didn't go looking for it. The Lord said, say this, say this, gave it to me. People got saved and we put it together and people took it. Within year one of me being on the streets, it was in Hungary and South Africa. We've trained people in, in 30 nations. Wow. Like it's, it kind of grew legs and ran around the world. And really it's very simply, an invitation into partnership. I believe that is the power. You know, anything that comes out the mouth of God is anointed. You know, the mud on the man's eyes, the fish on the right side, and that's on the right side. Anything that comes out of God's mouth is anointed like you alluded to. And God really created this. He really spoke this and told me to give it away. So what it will do, it will enable an individual to share the gospel in a matter of minutes from introduction to salvation. But what it does, it enables the, the individual to partner with the Holy Spirit. And in that partnership comes the power. You know, I believe this is a boat that Jesus is using, and I believe it becomes a platform for the Holy Spirit to release the gospel to those that need it. Where can people get a hold of this? Yeah, so jesusatthedoor.com. Um, we have an app as well, which have, has over 30 languages on a free app, um, Jesus at the Door. So yeah, all our resources are on there. Listen, I know you've been truly blessed today. We're gonna have Scott come back again and share on Face to Face. For those of you that are hungry to share the gospel, why don't you get this in your hand? I believe it will be a, a vessel that God will use in a mighty way. I've been Evangelist Nathan Morris with my special guest, Scott McNamara. We'll see you next time on Face to Face. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. We want to thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Shake the Nations Ministries and our YouTube channel, why don't you click the subscribe button? Also, if you want notifications of our brand new videos, why don't you click the bell? There's so much more in Shake the Nations Ministries that you can get involved in. Why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more? To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.